Hey there friends, how's it going? David Potts with Song Notes here, and today I have some finger style blues goodness coming your way. So Richard, this one's going out to you. You wrote in asking if I had any finger style blues, and I responded letting you know that I actually don't, and I basically wanted to fill that gap in my library. I've been overdue to return to some bluesy kind of stuff, so here I am, everybody. It's gonna be a finger style blues over a 12 bar blues sequence using Travis picking. Now here's the deal, I'm gonna start very beginner friendly. I'm gonna start with the basics, right? The 12 bar blues, show you the three chords you need, talk about the progression. Then I'll talk about simple melody note stuff, stuff you could play with one finger without chords, without strumming patterns. And if you pull up the backing track on my website, you could literally solo over the blues using this basic melody stuff I'm gonna show you, right? And then the third, fourth, and fifth phase of things, I'll get a bit more intermediate, right? Talk about some chord modifications, so that E7, A7, and B7, so that we can play the melody notes while we're fretting the chord shapes. That lets us strum or finger pick in this case and sort of get that rhythmic uh, chord tonalities while we're also adding those melody notes. So you're getting the best of both worlds. And then the final phase or two, I'll talk about the intricacies and the nuance of the finger style, bringing in a bit more of a subtle rhythmic flair to things, and then also how to bring in that sort of alternating bass note with the right thumb. That's gonna be the final step, right? Which is the most tricky. So no matter what skill level you're at, you can come aboard, we're about to take off in the station here and uh, come along for the journey and you'll be in good shape. And if you get sort of to a point where it's a good challenge, you can hop off and just practice that. And I have a few backing tracks, I have some extended videos, they're all over on my website. And in addition to a four page PDF, uh, handmade with care just for you, just for this lesson, it has a tab for the full exercise I showed you at the beginning, as well as notes for all these sort of uh, stations we're gonna hit building up to it. So again, no matter your skill level, you'll be in good shape. So uh, let's get into this one and have some fun with the blues, okay? So let's kick this off looking at the chord progression that this whole thing is gonna be built on top of. And it looks like this. Now, some of you might look at this and immediately recognize something. And you might think, ah, oh, that's the 12 bar blues, right? What is the 12 bar blues? It's simply a 12 measure chord progression. And no matter which key we're in, we're gonna follow the same pattern, right? The first four measures are gonna be our one chord. The next two measures are gonna be the four chord. Then we go back to the one chord for two measures. And then the last line is gonna be the five chord to the four chord to the one chord back to the five chord, and then we start the whole thing over again. So you've heard, I'm certain, countless songs that use this progression, and it has a very recognizable bluesy vibe, right? So really quick, the chords. E7, A7, and B7, okay? Those are the three chord voicings we're gonna need. A few practical notes I will say. For the E7, sometimes I admittedly will just go to an E, and then get my pinky in there a little bit late, right? Like it's showing up late to work or whatever, that's gonna be fine. Don't feel like you have to have your pinky down before you play any string. In reality, it's totally fine just to get going with an E and then add that pinky. And you can even go back to the E and then add the pinky back, right? You'll hear in my backing track that I'm doing that. So that's one thing to make your life a little bit easier. And the other thing I'm gonna say is really quick, I'm gonna just be calling these E, A, and B for most of this lesson. So if I ever say that, you can just understand or assume that I mean E7, A7, or B7, okay? Um, really quick, let me just play through this chord progression and I'm gonna count each measure just so you can sort of hear the tonality. Okay, so let me count in. One, two, three, four. One, two, ready, go. One, two, right? First line, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Bar blues, and it starts all over again. You could hum your own bluesy melody over this. Last line here, B7 to A7. So you probably have heard that uh, progression of chords before, I'm guessing, and you could you could play it just as I did right there and hum your own little melodies over it with that sort of bluesy uh, mindset. And it's it can be a fun way to sort of just get going on with this. So that's gonna be the beginning uh, first step of things. All right, next up, let's look at the melody notes that we're gonna be adding on top of that chord progression, right? Now, the whole idea is we're gonna end up with this fancy pants thing I showed you at the beginning, right? <laughs> melody 
that's a bit more complicated, a bit more nuanced. We're gonna start way simpler with something that resembles what I just played, but it's kind of like the broad stroke penciled in, you know, version that is a lot easier to learn as well. And a quick note as well is that this is one of countless melodies you could play over the 12 bar blues. This is not like the blues melody. No, there's countless melodies you could play. They're gonna have bluesy vibes. This is one of them. And this is, again, I put this together for this arrangement, but let's start with something simple. So here's the cool part. This entire thing, all the melody notes we're gonna be using are just on the thinnest two strings. And it's gonna be the open second and third fret. Now, when do we play which notes? Here's the cool part. Whenever we're playing an E, our sort of melodic through line is gonna be the second string and it's gonna be bum, 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 ba -dum. bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum. And we go to the A, it's gonna be the same fret, but it's gonna be the first string. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum. And then we go back to the E. Bum, 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 ba -dum. For the B7, it's gonna be da, 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 da. I just walked through the whole sequence there. Let me put on the backing track now, and this is available on my website if you wanna do this yourself. I'm gonna play just the melody notes, no strumming, no finger picking. And I'm doing this to show you, you can basically have fun, play something bluesy with a bit of melody, only using two strings and just a couple frets. Okay, so here's what that sounds like. One, two, three, four, one, two, ready, go. So there we have it. Just with a few notes and a few strings, we're able to play a bluesy sounding melody on top of the 12 bar blues. Now here's the deal. For the next part of the journey, we wanna take those same melody notes, but we wanna be putting our fretting hand into chord shapes. That way we can play the melody while we're also kind of either strumming or in this case, finger picking chords. And it's gonna just flesh things out, make it sound bigger and make it sound like a full, a full piece, right? So here's an example of this, taking the same melody obviously and you also hear those chord tones that are flushing things out so later on we'll add some finger picking pattern stuff but for now I just want to I want to teach you some chord voicings that are gonna be melody friendly in this case okay so for the E these are the three voicings we're gonna want to look at and see how by adding these uh, ring and pinky fingers I'm able to get those melody notes now here's some uh, tips what I'm gonna be doing in this throughout this exercise is I'm not gonna be playing the fifth string. Normally when you play E, you go like this, right? With your all three fingers right here. I'm not gonna fret the fifth string, so I'm actually gonna use my middle finger on the fourth string. Now that's not something we normally do for an E, but the benefit of doing that is it leaves us these two fingers open to add some flourish, right? Specifically on the second string, we're gonna add our ring finger on the second fret, and then our pinky on the third fret. Get used to going between those three chords, right? If you're interested in names, this is a regular E. This is an E at six, right? And the reason why is that this note is a C sharp. And if you look at the E major scale, what is the sixth note? It's a C sharp. So we're gonna call this an E at six, right? Now this note is a D. D is actually the flat seventh in the E major scale, but we're gonna call it E7. It's a dominant seventh sort of chord here. Don't worry about the names if it's tripping you up. It's the same E7 I showed you earlier, basically, right? So these are th the three voicings for E that we want, okay? Uh, again, I find it easier to just skip the fifth string. You can put your finger there if you want and let your pinky do all this stuff, but I find it easier to let my ring and pinky work together there, okay? Now for the A, these three voicings are A7, right? Then we add, um, well, there's a couple ways we can do this. I'm gonna add my pinky on the second fret of the, th of the thinnest string, and then third fret of the thinnest string. So A7, A7 add six, and then A7, just a pure A7, because this is a G, okay? And then this is a G. So this, this version of A7, 
has two G's in it, which is fine. You can have multiple of one note, uh, but basically A7, that's how I like to do it. If you want, you could do index and middle with your ring and pinky. Okay, either one is gonna work. And then we have our B7, which is just a regular chord we're gonna be playing anyway. The only modification here is taking this F sharp and moving it to this G. This is the fifth. From B to F sharp is a fifth. If we go a half step higher, that's a sharp fifth, okay? So being able to do this is gonna be helpful. So these chords might seem a little bit weird to you at first, but here is my suggestion. Is remember that melody I showed you, right? playing it with just individual notes, but then maybe get your guitar and when you're kind of just noodling around, practice going from that E. You can just sort of do these slow strums and get the suggestion of that melody, right? For the A. Back to the E. And then B7. Then the A. Right? And then back to the E. Um, okay, my point in showing you that is when I was working out this exercise, I didn't know what it was gonna be at first. I just started doing exactly what I was doing just then. I was playing those three chords and I was just sort of adding these notes and trying to just like listen out for some kind of groove or some kind of hook that I could catch on to and then build a lesson out of. And that's what I did here, okay? So um, page three of my PDF here, my practice PDF has these chords written out for you, okay? Now let's look at the next step, which is gonna be adding some more nuance to our melody here. Now, again, there's countless melodies you could play over the 12 bar blues. There's countless melodies you could play using the notes I just showed you. What I'm showing you here is the melody I decided to put together for this arrangement. But again, instead of doing this, That's the next step. But before we get there, let's take out this right thumb because this right thumb is gonna throw you off if you're not like a Travis picking wizard at first, right? So the idea here is that the right thumb is only gonna play the bass note of whatever chord we're playing. And we're only gonna play it um, as many times as we're comfortable. I recommend playing it once if you can on the one count, right? Second line. Okay, so that's basically what I have tabbed out um, in step four here. But again, the main idea that I want you to get comfortable with is really, if you want to learn to play this just like I am, is internalizing that melody, right? So listen to my, uh, go to my lesson page and I have a sort of playthrough where I have a backing track that I'm playing on top of and you can just hear me playing. Take out that alternating bass note and you get this. What I'm doing here is the next thing I recommend doing, which is bringing in a pulsing, pulsing bass note, right? Do it on the one e and the two e and the three e and the four e and the one. Here, what I do for this slide is I just move the whole A7 shape to the first fret and then slide it up, right? Da, 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 E7. that I would
would then practice over and over again. Just settle into a groove, find a way to play it that makes you comfortable. And if you want to modify the melody a little bit, feel free to do that, right? You, you shouldn't necessarily treat this as something that's written in stone that you can't possibly ever deviate from. But that's my overall point is learn the melody first with simple bass notes. And then you can take what I just did and double up the bass notes, but you're staying on one string, right? Dum, bum, bum, bum. Too. Just take what I did, do it nice and slow. Okay? And then you'll be uh, in good shape. So then step five here is going to be adding the alternating bass notes. So this is going to be for the E, or E7, our right thumb is going to be bouncing between sixth and fourth string. It's also fifth and fourth string. Okay? Now, here's the tricky part, is we then have to combine that bass note with the melody stuff that we were doing in the previous step. So this is where you want to practice the previous step so much that you almost have that, that index finger memorized. The melody notes. And then you can turn this into this. Okay, it's tricky to do at first, but the main idea looking at the E7, right there. We're going to play that multiple times throughout this 12 bar blues sequence. The main idea here is again, it's the same melody note as I already showed you in the previous step. The only thing that's new are these bass notes, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, okay? Now the gray lines, if it's a solid gray line, it represents a pinch. See how I'm pinching these two fingers together, right? And if it's a jagged or a dashed gray line, that means the melody note is happening in between the bass notes. Right? Pinch would be like this. But the jagged line is... Okay? So if we look at this first phrase here, I'm gonna play it and just notice the notation, right? there, the pinches are happening on the one count and on the three count of the first measure, and then the one count of the second measure. And if you just practice that, you're going to be mostly there, okay, for the E7, because you're going to use the E7 over and over again. And then for the, the A7, it's going to be super similar, right? We're just sort of starting... Um, the pinch is on the fifth and first string as opposed to the sixth and second string, okay? The A7, the one different thing we're gonna do is that slide, like I said, right? Um, again, we're gonna pinch the open fifth string and then first fret of the second string, but then slide it up.
Then we get to the B7 here. This is gonna be, a, we're not gonna do a pinch on the one count, and this actually makes it a little bit easier. We're gonna do a bass melody, right? We're gonna do a pinch on the two count. One E N, two So the A7 and the B7 in that uh, ninth and 10th measure there. Bass, treble, bass, pinch. Sort of syncopated there, happening in between the bass notes and this the A. Okay, and then we get to this final two measures here. Now this is where it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to do. Um, okay, we have this little walk down that's happening on the thinnest two strings with the melody. Okay. Da, 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 da. I really want to get this sort of run down to the open second string, which is our B, okay? And then what we're gonna do with our bass notes is go six fourth for the first two quarter notes. And then we're gonna go from fifth to fourth and then go to the B7. So it's kind of like hinting at an A7 and then an A minor seven here, okay? That's how I have it sketched in parentheses there, but that sounds like this. is one thing that you can do uh, there. So if you want a playthrough uh, with the tabs on the screen, uh, head on over to my website. It has the backing track behind it as well to give you that context. Um, and I'll have a few different other playthroughs as well as far as the simpler melody notes from earlier in the lesson and then this full version, both a faster version and then a slower version. Those are all the tabs on screen over on my website, songnotes.net. And of course, the instructional PDF for this has everything tabbed out, um, the full exercise, the sort of intermediate exercises from steps two, steps three, steps four, all the chords, that's all there waiting for you. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this helpful. This has been a fun one to work out. Richard, I hope you found this helpful as well. Again, this is kind of where I'm at with the blues. I have a lot to learn and I kind of just go back to this one you know, cluster of notes that I use in this lesson over and over again. But I think that uh, I'm fine with that for now because I'm sure I will continue to learn and add new phrasing to my vocabulary. But I wanted to share this to let you all know um, what you can play uh, using finger style and the blues, no matter what your skill level is. So I'll see you in the next lesson, my friends. Again, head on over to my website to get the good stuff for this lesson, all the backing tracks and all the extra videos and stuff. They're all there, plus all my other blues lessons. But until then, I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye-bye.